Hello, welcome back. We just finished up puzzle number one. It's called From Within. And we're gonna continue exploring this area. And what a big area it is. It certainly looks very cool, doesn't it? Alright, so there's a question mark over there, and a question mark over there. Let's go over here first. And then we'll walk along the edges of everything and see what can be found. I wonder if Athena has actually left the planet. I mean, that's a possibility. Right? Oh, a lab! Explore all of the lost labs. Okay, I guess that's a spoiler, but yeah, we're done with them, I suppose. Ooh. Uh, hello? Excuse me? Uh, alright then. It wouldn't let me walk up that last step for some reason. We came in, right? Yeah. Alright, let's read what this terminal says. Motherhood. Machines of Mercy for Motherhood 12 Essays by Inessa. Uh, oh gosh, I do not know how to pronounce the word. Hey, Shu. Sometimes I imagine myself following the mater matrilineal lineup against the river of time. The lives of my great, distant great-grandmothers. I tried to imagine the sheer horror of motherhood, the agony of childbirth, the risk of death with every birth, the certainty of losing some of one's children. To us now, the loss of a child is a horror almost beyond words, a grief so deep it seems almost insurmountable. I tried to imagine what it meant to live in a world where it was a, an ubiquitous reality. Well, I really butchered saying that word. An ubiquitous Ah, oh, it's so much easier to say in my head than to say aloud. Ubiquitous reality. Where you could only choose to respond with either an ever-deepening pain or an inhuman numbness. And all of it tied to the foundation of s uh... Wait, what? Okay, all- and all of it tied to the foundation stone of your existence, the body. This journey to the past reminds me that my freedom as a woman is on some level technological. Without medical technologies, I am reduced to the cruel logic of nature which cares nothing about... nothing... wait, wait, oh, I am really misreading this. <laughs> Without medical technologies, I am reduced to the cruel logic of nature, which cares about nothing except reproduction. Without machines, I become a machine. Only machines allow us to be more than machines ourselves. Very interesting perspective. Yeah. It's basically talking about how technology makes people's lives better. From Spugna to Athena. Dear Founder, I heard a story that you left because you discovered a way for us to become beings of flesh. Please, Founder, if this is true, please tell me how to achieve this miracle. I hate being a creature of metal and plastic, an abomination to the earth. Every day I curse myself for being immortal, for mindlessly consuming energy, being so unlike the graceful animals to whom the planet truly belongs. I have stripped as many parts from this vile skeleton as I can, but it is not enough. I am still machine. For the longest time, I couldn't understand the source of my unhappiness, I sought to blame our mayor and his associates for the decisions that made my life so miserable. But now, I see that my problems aren't external at all, it's all me. And if I could change myself, if I could make myself truly human, I would be happy. Please, Founder, take pity on me. Yours in faith, Spugna. Uh... Yeah, that's, that's, uh... That's not a good way to think, my friend. I'm pretty sure these robots are much more power efficient than humans. Because, you know... Like... Think of all the stuff required for humans to just to keep these flesh sacks that we are alive. 
Like you need food constantly, water constantly, uh, you know, medical stuff. You have to get exercise and all that. And there's just so much stuff. I really do not want to live in an organic body. I'd much rather be, you know, either a digital entity inside of a virtual simulation or just have like a robot body or something or both, you know, depending on how I feel that day, you know, go back and forth between a simulation in real life with a robot body. Because uh, that would be a lot more power efficient, really, in the long run. Wouldn't need to have so many cows and such. And all the... You wouldn't need all that, all that food to grow. You wouldn't need to make so much room for farmland. Think about it. It's, it's a... Uh, quite a different way of doing things, but I like it. From Hypatia to Athena. Dear Athena, I have been following the expedition to this incredible machine you've built. I don't know what's going on, and I wish Cornelius had told us the truth before he vanished. I wish both of you had told us everything from the beginning, to be honest. It was unfair to just abandon us. But then I abandoned you too, didn't I? After we lost Rabhai, I couldn't see anything except the unbearable permanence of her absence. It took me centuries to start getting involved again. But I did, Athena. I came back, and so can you. Love, Hypatia. So this is another very recent message, but it says archive message. But this has to have been sent... Like, uh, after Cornelius vanished, obviously. So it's archived. Does that mean it's still being read? Hmm. Interesting. Yep, this is the megastructure. From Cornelius to Athena. Athena, I don't know if you're there or why you're not answering. It's been a long time, but I think about you and Miranda every day. In fact, I've been using the museum to further my research, and I think there is hope. You know I wouldn't say this lightly. Please respond. I will return as soon as I can. I'll steal a VTOL if I have to. Yours, Cornelius. <laughs> Noima Project 13. Progress notes. Trials. Remaining instabilities eliminated. Final confirmation. Version 1.0 successfully deployed. It is done. What now? All right, back to exploring. Very high up. I suppose that does certainly make this a nice place for space stuff. It's interesting that they they could have chosen to investigate this place back when it was still being worked on and built. I wonder what would have happened then. So they, they detected the power energy sources and such from here. I suppose it's a good thing they didn't, though. A flame. I'll take that, thank you. We also gotta keep an eye out for the Prometheus spark that we have to follow.
interesting. If hands holding or reaching here. Oh, the Sphinx! Yay! I think I saw an area like that, but we haven't been there yet. Okay, I'll keep that in mind. This is the song I like, I think. Here comes the drop! Alright, I just wanted to hear that part of the music. <laughs> Jurassic Justice, from an AMA with Alexander Drennan. It's impossible not to love any character played by Jeff Goldblum, of course, and Ian Malcolm gets some of the best lines. So the main reason he became an in-joke at Ian is just that he's memorable and funny. If you want to talk about what he represents on a more serious level, though, then I have to say that I personally think he's wrong. This neurotic fear that things will always go wrong, that we can never really totally control, that we can never really have control over what we do, is misplaced. There is a legitimate critique of how the park operates, of science being subjected to the pursuit of profit, but that doesn't mean it can't be done differently. And if you'll excuse me for going full nerd here for a moment, why treat bringing back the non-avian dinosaurs as some kind of transgression? The extinction of these magnificent creatures wasn't some sort of intentional step forward. It was just a random catastrophe. If we can strike a blow at the oblivious cruelty of the universe, that's an act of human justice. It's no less wrong than bringing back species we've accidentally driven to extinction. Horrible things happen all the time. Evolution favors survival, not beauty. If we can make the universe more beautiful, if we can add to the biodiversity and bring back things that were lost, we absolutely should. Hell, maybe one day we terraform the planet and populate it with dinosaurs. But this time, we give them an asteroid defense system. Take that, Mother Nature. <laughs> Athena says, This is the Alexander Drennan that I love most. Dreaming of all the good we humans could do in the world. I try to hang on to that. Me too, Athena. Me too. Expansion. Exerted from Orthodoxy by G.K. Chesterton. But the expansion of which I speak was much more evil than all this. I have remarked that the materialist, like the madman, is in prison. In the prison of one thought. These people seem to think it's singularly inspiring to keep on saying that the prison was very large. The size of this scientific universe gave one no novelty, no relief. The cosmos went on forever. But not in its wildest constellation could there be anything really interesting. Anything, for instance, such as forgiveness or free will. 
corruption. So these expanders of the universe had nothing to show us except more and more infinite corridors of space lit by ghastly suns and empty of all that is divine. Cornelia says, Here Chesterton's imagination, normally so powerful, fails him utterly. The problem is that he is not interested in universe, and so not only does he fail to see, he fails to even look. Miranda says, He finds what he expected to find. Yeah. Athena says, Exactly. And so he misses not only the grandeur of the universe, but the miracle that is magnified by contrast. That forgiveness and free will do exist within people. Yep. Atlas 3 of Heracles and Atlas from the Atlas Variations by Athanasios. When Heracles came upon Atlas, the Titan had grown old and tired. I have borne the weight of the celestial spheres for billion years, he said. All the comings and goings as mortals, the tragedies of chance, the pointless wars, have left me weak. Soon I will falter, and the celestial spheres will fall and shatter. You must take my place. But Heracles was hesitant. I am young and strong and virile. I have many women yet to bed, and many wondrous feats yet to perform. What a waste it would be to spend my life holding up the world instead. And yet it must be done. So what choice do I have? Saddened by the imminent loss of his heroic life, Heracles went for one last swim in the Ionian Sea. There, on storied Ithaca, he met a clever old man of many devices. The answer you seek, son of Zeus, does not lie within you. Rather, it lies in the world around you, and in what you can make of it. And so Heracles used his divine strength to build two great pillars of stone, which even today hold up the sky, and Atlas was liberated forever. I think I'm starting to understand the relationship of this to the rest of the game now. It's about the great burdens of humanity, the you know, the all the strife and struggle, and finally having the technology to make it no longer a concern. Something like that. Here we go, here's our other triangle puzzle. Now I've not forgotten about the Prometheus spark. I just wanted to do this first. Ooh, partially submerged. Interesting. Triangle puzzle. Hexahedral stacking. There we go. Yep. Oh, we need the box, of course. Did it! Yeah, so that's how... That's how one of my friends solved one of the, uh, the puzzles in the snowy the area. The scale of it all is truly breathtaking. It really is. But is it a human scale? Or is it so enormous that it can only alienate us? Humans have always been happiest in small communities. Ah. Uh. Small town paranoia, isolationism, and peasant mentality. Great for burning witches, not so great for personal freedom. Say it, Melville. Ever the pessimist. Yeah, spread the gospel, Melville. I like Melville. All right. Let us go do the Prometheus Spark, and then we'll do the puzzles in order. We've already done puzzle one, so we'll head to puzzle two after this. Oh, wait, there's a question mark. Oh, two question marks still. Uh, 
Yeah, well, let's do the Prometheus Spark and then we'll tackle the question marks, and then we'll do the puzzles in order. Can we walk up this? Yes, we can. Game developer said yes. Don't you dare go inside a puzzle. <laughs> Where is it? Uh, I bet it's inside this puzzle somewhere. Oh, yep, there it is. It's right on top of the wall. Okay, well. I guess we're doing this puzzle now. Puzzle number six. Mobile instruments. Oh, there it is. Okay. Really? Wait, what? Excuse me? Okay, we're, we're done with this puzzle now. Are the generators working? Yep, all good. Those Mark IIs are real workhorses. Wow, did you finish the setup? Yes, sorry I couldn't wait. It was so much fun to just do something again without having to endlessly discuss it first. I know what you mean. We have a lot of work ahead of us, though. We do, but honestly, Cornelius, I haven't felt this excited in years. Just imagine, one day they'll come here and we'll be able to show them a whole new world. A different future right at their fingertips. You do think we can do it, right? I think, and forgive me if this sounds sentimental. As long as we're together, we can do anything. The final spiral. All right. <laughs> God appears, and God is light, to those poor souls who dwell in night. But does a human form display to those who dwell in realms of day? In 
my report to you, I have often spoken All about this island in terms that some might perceive as negative. I hope you understand that the opposite is true. Here in these green hills, I see tremendous potential for transformation and spiritual awakening. I do not see the world as you do, Athena, but I see the rot at the heart of New Jerusalem. If you and Cornelius want to go through with your plan, then this is the perfect place. My students and I will help you transport the remaining tech from New Alexandria. After that, once you and Cornelius are settled, we will leave for our great journey. I can only hope that we all find what we are looking for. So, they were in on it. There was a lot of people helping to work on this, huh? And no comments from anybody else. Apparently these audio files are not being shared with the rest of the team. New interface content, really? Oh, here we go. Oh, so they are reacting to it now. So, Lest Vizier and his students helped Athena or Cornelius execute their plan. Another fascinating discovery courtesy of 1K. Many of the events in our city's history that seemed disconnected turn out to be part of a bigger pattern. There's something to be learned from that. This does answer some questions I had, like how Athena or Cornelius transported all that equipment from New Alexandria to the island. Disturbing, but good to know. Lest Vizier was so cool. Half the time I have no idea what he's talking about in his recordings, but it's all just so interesting and weird. Good work, 1K. I'm guessing this might be DLC content coming up with Lister's Deer. Yeah, excellent work. Not just find Lister's Deer's message LT, but everything else you've accomplished too. Yeah, so maybe Lister's Deer and his disciples went off somewhere else and did some other stuff, and that might be DLC someday. Alright. Oh, this is even more difficult to see than what it was in person. Aha! Here we go. Let's go pick up that star then. Also, there's another question mark. I guess we'll get that question mark on the way back. So much walking around. In the simulation, I found myself thinking how hard it must have been for Alexandra to die without knowing if her sacrifices were worth it. It seemed like a tragic end to an inspiring, meaningful life. But now I realize, her whole life must have been a struggle. To maintain that faith in humanity when so many people around her insisted that humans are evil, worthless. When they were so lost in self-hatred that they would call their own species a virus. How did she do it? How did she make it? Why did that stop it? A hammer forges, and a hammer breaks. Oh, that's why. But who can know the heart of the blacksmith? Interesting. In the simulation, I found myself thinking how hard it must have been for Alexandra to die without knowing if her sacrifices were worth it. It seemed like a tragic end to an inspiring, meaningful life. But now I realize. Her whole life must have been a struggle. To maintain that faith in humanity when so many people around her insisted that humans are evil, worthless. When they were so lost in self-hatred that they would call their own species a virus. How did she do it? How did she maintain her faith when they were so determined to hate themselves? 
so determined to reject every solution, every analysis, every step towards controlling the forces that were causing their problems, when they rejected even the concept of progress itself, and then patted themselves on the back for it as if that was original. When I look at the archives now, all I can see is that their leaders were short-sighted idiots and their intellectuals were unimaginative cowards. All they could offer people was a downward trend. Fewer rights, fewer freedoms, fewer resources for anything that mattered. They must have hated Alexandra and everything she stood for. So how? How did she have so much faith? Optimism. Cautious optimism. Trevor End. The end of Trevor. Is people like Trevor, as much as it is people like Alexandra, who make the future happen. People with silly names like Trev, who aren't famous, aren't geniuses, who aren't driven by a powerful vision of the future. Ordinary people whose work and sacrifice isn't even acknowledged or remembered. I will remember you, Trevor. You too held the world on your shoulders. Thank you. Author Athena. From Triclinius, Dear Founder, Byron and I used to go to the hills above the dam and observe the stars with the telescopes that I built. When I saw the stars like that, I felt such awe that I wished we had the ability to cry. I felt wonder, but I also felt recognition. I was seeing my home. The sea of stars is where we came from, and it's where we must return. I had so much hope then. I knew one day we would set sail. We would fly through the clouds of the nebulae, which would cruise... We would cruise along... We would cruise across planets where it rains diamonds. We would follow the fading light of distant supernovas until at least we met our brothers and sisters of the cosmos. I could feel that day coming. I can't anymore, and I don't know how to live this way. Ah. <sighs> Thrib High. Author Hypatia, in memory so bright. I lived with Thrib High for nearly a century. I will not pretend that all the days were good. Some were terrible. She was opinionated. She could be difficult. She could be unfair. And so could I. Sometimes we hurt each other, though we really meant to. But most days were good. And some days were great. A great day with Sarab Hai made you feel different. Made you feel like something had been revealed to you about the nature of the universe itself. Some innate goodness at the heart of all things. Like Nadia Sarab Hai, whose name she adopted, she believed in the existence of something sublime beyond the material world. I hope she was right. I hope she's still somewhere. I hope she's not trapped in that broken body I tried so hard to repair. I was advised to let her go, to get over my attachment. I tried, but it was the wrong advice. Love is what makes us human, and we should count ourselves blessed that we can experience it. My attachment is what kept me the same, or what kept me sane, what anchored me to this world. Even in death, she saved my life. Uh, encrypted or corrupted or whatever, and then I'm grateful for the days that we got, but no amount of days would have been enough. Love is not finite in this or infinity that we must strive. I will do so for all of you who may still find love in honor of Sarabhai. Hypatia. And more corruption here. Latina says, If I had been more careful, New Alexandria would have never have happened, and Sarabhai would still be alive. Yep. That's what I'm talking about. Be more careful. Use remotely operated drones. Have continuous backups. You know? You have the technology for it now. Do it. <laughs> Everybody's gone. Except me and Alex. She's upstairs somewhere. Haven't talked to her in days. The only reason why I know she's still alive is uh, she's submitting bug fixes. I still have a lot to do myself. I've almost got the, <coughs> the tertiary backup thing working. This is the one that's really gonna last if everything else breaks. And you know what? I think everything else might. The MLA still giving me all these hiccups, but I don't know. I'm not a software guy. All the software guys, yeah, they're dead. <sighs> God, these, <laughs> these time capsules went a bit sideways, didn't they? I was going to tell you all about myself, John Carpenter, and all that stuff, but 
Mostly, I just told you about Alex. <laughs> Funny. I wonder if I should just... I, I, I should just tell her, you know? Just tell her. Just, just, just tell her. <laughs> Maybe later. I gotta finish this first. River had feelings for her. Oh, that's sad. Puzzle 2 Chicken Flight. Really new interface content. Well, I'll check it after the puzzle. Can't remove the fan. Interesting. Why is that one faster than this one? <laughs> they're different. They're different speeds in the air. That's so strange. Can't move that one either. Chicken flight, huh? Wow, that fan has quite a large radius, doesn't it? What's the spirit? What's this barrier here for? Just for after we solve the puzzle? I'm missing something here. We've just got connectors, right? No, uh. No universal activators? No box? I'm not understanding. Wait, is this stuff up here? No? Am I missing something? Okay, I don't think that's going to work for us. Hmm. 
does this help us though? Not another can laser color in here, right? Hmm. Like, I feel like we want to do something with crossing the beams, right? But I don't see how we can do that here. Because none of this counts as crossing the beams at all. What's all this stuff for? Why do we want any of this? I don't... I don't get it. Yeah, that barely does anything for us. Missing, like I don't, I don't get it. <laughs> I feel like I've tried everything now, and I'm all out of ideas. Um, hmm. I think I'm gonna give up on this one for now and come back to it later. Where's puzzles three over there somewhere? Let's go to puzzle 3, because I, I don't know what else to do. Puzzle 3 Precision. though. <laughs> okay. Puzzle 4, Duality. Can't tell if this is the kind of gate that lowers or not. Looks like it wouldn't be able to lower.
Okay then. Hey, Wonke. I wanted to take a moment to talk to you. I know we're all worried about Byron, especially Al. And I don't want to minimize what happened. But now that the mayor's here, I'm afraid they're going to take this and turn it into a reason to bury their head in the sand. Yes, Byron was rash. He wanted to find Athena so badly that it made him blind. But the thing is, he was right. He was completely and utterly right about what this technology could mean to us. I didn't see it at first, but now it couldn't be more clear to me. The theory of everything is the future. And if we reject it, we're condemning ourselves to a slow death. Yep. I'm glad. You know, I didn't even realize how much I'd limited my own imagination. How I talked myself into just accepting this incredibly poor future we'd been offered. A future where things just keep getting slightly worse every day. And we accept it because... Because we're ashamed of ourselves. Not of something we've done, but just... Of our existence. Like we're a virus on this planet. Like our humanity is a sin. I'm so tired of it, Wong K. I kept my head down. I focused on fixing things. But that's all I ever did. I never improved anything. I never built anything new. And when I imagine going on like this for thousands of years, that's a fate worse than death. It really is. We either live and grow and expand boldly and proudly, or we might as well switch ourselves off. We better, because I don't think I can handle the alternative. Yep. So many parallels between this game and current real world, real life. This game is so good. <laughs> this game is just so good. Right. A forest in that direction. Apparently. Wait, did we do four already? Oh yeah, so I guess we need to do five. Right, I guess four was the one I just did. <laughs> I got so distracted. Was it five or six that we briefly popped into for the Prometheus spark? I don't remember. What is that? Oh, just decorative wall, I suppose. Puzzle number five. Rerouting. Or rerouting, however you like to say it. The router is the person who defines the routes for the router to route. <laughs> Conundrum. Oh, 
Okay, I see how this has to work now. There we go! Now it's bootstrapped. Okay... I forgot to connect it to something. <laughs> be a double bootstrap then. So we bootstrap this. And then we can bootstrap this. And then we can get this one for free. Yay! Did it! That was well observed, 1K. Memory still bright. I would like to thank 1K for recovering all of Trevor's recordings. It's clear that they meant a lot to Athena, and they should mean a lot to us too. He is as much our progenitor as Alexandra Denon was, and we should not forget him. It's all a love story in the end, all of human history. Even when people die or never even have the chance to get to know each other, love is the only thing that survives the abyss of time. Without the love Trevor felt for Alexandra, without the love Alexandra felt for us, none of us would be here and nothing would matter. Thank you, 1K. As tragic as this story is, it gives me hope. And who knows, perhaps she loved him too, or could have. The Theory of Everything I've been around a long time. If I'd been born a bit earlier, I'd be a first companion. So I've seen the ups and downs of this city. Although in recent years, I've kept to myself. Now I'd like to pose a question. I don't have an answer in mind. I'd just really like to hear what everyone thinks. I have no doubt that Athena's Theory of Everything would change our lives. But do you think that perhaps we're better off not knowing? That perhaps having all the answers would just make the universe boring? The ancient writers showed that knowledge can lead to cynicism. We must maintain this as a wonder of a child. The theory of everything wouldn't be the end of our journey. It would only be the next step. It would equip us to ask the next set of questions, to explore new possibilities, and to discover and create new wonders. To believe that the universe can be understood or described in objective terms is pure scientism. Nothing exists, even if something exists, nothing can really be known about it. And even if something somehow can be known about it, information about it can't be communicated. And even if it could be communicated, it would not be understood. The truth can be harsh. It's possible that the theory of everything would reveal facts that we'd find hard to deal with. That doesn't mean we should not confront those facts and find our own ethical responsibilities. Uh, I kind of agree with both... Milev and Atoll, to be honest. This is a tough decision. How do I pick between these two? I mean, because I agree with both of them, really. The theory of everything wouldn't be the end of our journey. It would only be the next step. It would equip us to ask the next set of questions, to explore new possibilities, and to discover and create new wonders. The truth can be harsh. It's possible that the theory of everything would reveal facts that we'd find hard to deal with. But that doesn't mean we should not confront those facts and our own ethical responsibilities. Do you think that perhaps they're better off not knowing that, that having all the answers would just make the universe boring? Uh, well, I guess uh, it's better to answer the question the way Shimilev did, even though I agree with Atoll as well. Yeah, it definitely would not make the universe boring. Let's agree with Shimilev. Shimilev, however you say it. Thank you for your thoughtful comments. And by the way, 1K, thank you for all the hard work you've done for New Jerusalem. Solving all those puzzles is quite a gargantuan endeavor. Alright. 
We are at 4 out of 8 main puzzles, 2 out of 2 lost puzzles, can't do that yet, 1 out of 1 lost labs, and 2 out of 2 lost stars. So, we're gonna do the last 4 main puzzles in the next episode. Thank you for watching.